Are you zealous in following religious practices but fail to follow the commandment of love? Good morning, everyone. This is our reflection question for today. Alan Kraft, in his book, Good News for Those Trying Harder, shares a story about a time when his wife borrowed his car and heard a CD he had loaded in the sound system. The song touched her. When she asked him about it, he was able to recite the lyrics but had never thought much about their significance. So the next time he was in his car, he listened to the song as though for the first time and found himself weeping. He had heard the song dozens of times before and was even familiar with the lyrics but had never really heard the music. In today's Gospel reading, a group of Pharisees had come from Jerusalem to see for themselves who was causing all this commotion around Galilee, preaching to big crowds, healing the sick, and casting out demons. They immediately observed and criticized the disobedience of Jesus and his companions to the traditions of the elders, especially with regard to the washing of hands before eating. Jesus rebukes the Pharisees for failing to focus on what is essential. He said, These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. You thrust aside the commandment of God in order to preserve the traditions of men. The traditions had the force of law even if they were not written down. St. Paul himself admitted to having fanatically upheld these traditions and persecuted those who violated them. Many of these traditions had a practical purpose, even if during those times no one knew of bacteria and germs, eating without washing of hands would make one sick. Eating pork was banned because they carried disease. To ensure compliance, practices like these were tied to religion and disobedience was a sin to God. Jesus was not against tradition. He was a devout Jew who followed the law. What he despised was the legalism that accompanied these. People tended to forget the real law of God, that of unconditional love for one's neighbor, in favor of human tradition. For example, people made the excuse of not respecting and helping their parents, as the Mosaic law demanded, by saying God is first and saying all they had was consecrated to God, while actually keeping what they had away from their needy parents or helping the poor. We reflect today on our own zealousness to observe our religious practices, but fail to observe the law of God in its meaning and importance. For instance, we may judge people negatively for eating meat on a Friday in Lent, or for not wearing the prescribed clothes when they go to Mass, or when they do not know how to pray spontaneously during prayer meetings, or when they do not pray like us the devotional prayers to the saints, or when they do not observe the one hour fasting before Holy Communion, or for going to Holy Communion without going to confession first. In our families, we ask our children to go to Mass on Sunday, say their prayers regularly, read the Bible daily, not to forget their rosary and serve in the parish or community. And yet they see us, husband and wife, constantly quarreling. They observe us always angry and cursing, lying and scheming, criticizing others at every instance, never having a good word for anyone we dislike, not helping the poor, and engaging in corrupt activities just so we can be comfortable in life. We say love, 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 and even flash the finger sign along with the Korean phrase, Sarangye, or I love you. Yet, we do not practice it by failing to become peacemakers ourselves. There is this story of two brothers who had a misunderstanding one day about money. Another sibling tried to reconcile his two brothers and acted as go-between. But the fight grew bigger because this sibling, with good intentions at that, did not choose his words carefully. What one said of the other, he communicated verbatim to the other, even and especially the vile remarks, the curses, the improper words. Had he kept it to himself and relayed only the affirming words, even how few, and dwelt on the positives of their relationship and the beautiful memories they spent together in the past, the quarrel would not have escalated and reached the point of no return. Indeed, there is a self-righteous Pharisee in each one of us. Today, we ask the Lord to prune us, chisel us, refine us more. If we hear the word of God and do what he commands of us to do, that is, to constantly love unconditionally, our songs of love will surely be heard by our Heavenly Father and may just be our ticket to 
to His heavenly kingdom someday. Let us pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, keep me constantly in tune with your commandments. Keep me as loving, as faithful, as holy as you. This I pray in Jesus' holy and mighty name. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless your families, brothers and sisters. God bless our Catholic faith and couples for Christ.